hello last class uh, hello student hello friends uh, last class i discussed uh, regarding to adenine fiber adenosine in the optical fiber okay adenosine is the i told that is the there is a degradation in the signal level okay or amplitude if there is a degradation degradation in the amplitude of the any signal so we, uh, that will provide the attenuation in optical fiber next is the signal distortion or it is called as a dispersion when dispersion is to happen uh, so normally uh, dispersion happen uh, when there is a broadening of the pulse okay oh, here you can see if uh, if there is a signal okay so suppose this is a signal okay so if uh, uh, this signal that is the uh, one end of the fiber okay and uh, it's uh, entering into the fiber and the other end of the fiber suppose this is broadened okay so this is called the signal distortion or the dispersion so what happen uh, normal if uh, every pulse are broaden in the same way that there will be no overlapping uh, suppose uh, this is the square wave okay uh, right so when suppose this pulse is broadened but this is not broadened what will happen and both, both are broadened right so then what will happen it will be like that overlapping of the neighboring pulses okay overing uh, overlapping of the neighboring pulses this will uh, create a distortion dispersion means when the broadening happen in each pulse this is the dispersion due to the dispersion the signal distortion happen inside the fiber okay so this is called the uh, signal distortion so if uh, you are getting suppose 1 and 0 1 and 0 this signal you should get but uh, here you are not understanding so 1 0 1 is uh, it, it is uh, assume as a Uh, one one one. Okay, so the you cannot interpret the proper information at the receiver end. So this is the dispersion or the signal distortion inside the fiber. So there are the various reason due to that the pulse broadening may happen inside the optical fiber. You can see here the diagram shown the two uh, pulses are the input pulses are there. So when it's propagating uh, in the T one, okay T one that is the very beginning of the optical fiber. Okay. After traveling some distance, suppose this is the T2 at T2 point. Okay, at T2 point, what happens? It is little bit broader and it is also little bit broader, but you can distinguish. Okay, you can distinguish little bit. Again, after time period of T3, uh, so a more broadening happens. So it is also somehow we can uh, interpret this signal. Okay, one zero one like that. So when it reach to um, that point location, the after the T4 time period. so you can see the uh, more broadening of the pulse you cannot distinguish so you all are assuming as a one 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 okay so this is happen after the time period so the other end of the fiber you will get a such signal you are sending this signal but you should get you are getting this signal so this is the distortion this is uh, uh, the pulse broadening happen along the distance So this the uh, <coughs> normally the for case of the dispersion, if you want to remove the dispersion, the output waveform should be exactly equal to the input waveform. Normally attenuation it reduces the amplitude. So this is the amplitude in attenuation you will get this amplitude. Okay, but in case of the dispersion, the um, distortion of the pulses or modulated signal. Right. So if a uh, uh, Mm, uh, this thing, everything I told. So normally, no power is lost during the dispersion, but the broadening happens. The signal change, the signal, the shape of the signal will change, but overall power will not uh, uh, change. Okay, suppose if for sending the five milliwatt power, if attenuation happen, uh, so normally instead of five milliwatt power, you will get I think the four point uh, seven milliwatt power like that. But in case of the dispersion, if we are Uh, getting the five for sending the five milliwatt power. Uh, suppose this five milliwatt power contain the one zero one zero signal, but at the other end, in this person happen then the five milliwatt per same information will get same power you will get that five milliwatt power also you will get. But instead of getting the information like one zero one zero, you will get the three point one or four one like that. 
Okay, so this is the difference between attenuation and the dispersion. So here you can see in this diagram, so the one mode is propagating and uh, so another mode is propagating. Okay, so here in this diagram you can see, so uh, this mode has reached, so this is the uh, other end of the fiber, okay, that point. Okay, so you can see, so at this point, the position of the both the modes are not same, okay. It reached earlier and it reached later. Okay, due to that, if both the uh, modes are reached at the same time at the other end, so then you will get the same. This is the pulse, the same pulse you will get at the other end. Due to that, you are getting the pulse broadening of the, at the output. Okay, so this uh, mechanism is the dispersion mechanism. Okay, so dispersion is can measure by 10 uh, nanosecond per kilometer. So uh, here the types of the dispersion, there are the uh, three types of the dispersion, intermodal dispersion, intramodal dispersion, polarization dispersion. So intermodal dispersion or it is called as a modal delay dispersion, it is normally happen in the multimode fiber. Okay, intermodal dispersion is normally happen inside the multimode fiber, intramodal. Okay, intermodal is also known as the chromatic dispersion. Uh, so you can divide the intermodal as the two types: uh, the material dispersion and wave gas dispersion. So apart from the intermodal and intramodal, there is a one mode dispersion that is called the polarization mode dispersion. So the intermodal dispersion that used to happen inside the single mode fiber. So what are the this thing are discussing? So intermodal uh, dispersion of modal delay. Normally in multimode fiber it used to happen. So this the few minutes before, uh, one minute before I told that if the two rays are propagating at the other end of the fiber, uh, the both the rays are not propagating at the same time at the other end of the fiber. So you will get a pulse broadening. Okay, so this, uh, how many, so multi, multiple rays are propagating only for the multi-mode fiber, right? In single mode fiber, only the single uh, uh, ray, ray is to propagate. In single mode fiber, you will not get the intermodal or modal delay. Okay. What is the modal delay? So, due to the different group velocity or the different uh, mode. What is the group velocity? If each mode is propagating at a particular velocity, that is called the uh, group velocity. If the all the uh, modes have, have the different uh, group velocity, so they will not reach at the other end of the fiber at the same time. Okay. So, uh, this is the fiber. So, one ray is propagating here like this way. So another ray is propagating like this way. Okay. So at the other end of the fiber, both the ray will not propagate at uh, the same time. Okay. And both the ray will not propagate at the same time. So this is uh, called the modal delay. The modal or modal delay. This signal distortion mechanism. So that's the uh, group velocity. Due to the group velocity, at the same particular frequency also we get the group velocity. So due to the different group velocity, we will get the modal delay. So modal delay means the time difference between the two ray propagating. So there are the two ray. One is uh, one ray is propagating very short time, another uh, reached at the uh, other end of the fiber at a short time period, and other ray reached at the other end other end of the fiber at a different time. Which is the time is longer than the previous one. The difference between these two, uh, two times is called as a uh, modal delay or you can define as a modal delay. So how much pulse is broadened uh, that can be de defined, uh, calculated by the modal delay and the uh, how, how much, uh, how many uh, rays are propagating through the fiber, more number of rays are there then uh, more, number, more uh, pulse broadening should be there inside the fiber. If the length of the fiber is also large, then there will be the large pulse broadening or dispersion. So we have to reduce those dispersion. So we'll discuss how can we reduce the modal delay dispersion. Mm, so this time, the what is the TMS? TMS means the ray which follow, uh, follows the lo longer period of time. Okay, so that that time is the TMS. The TMS is the shortest shortest ray which uh, reached at the earlier as compared to the, the other ray. So this is the uh, T mean time period. So, how can you, how much broadening is happened? So, how can you measure the broadening of the pulse? So, that is the difference between these two types. Okay, T max minus T min. And so, this derivation is not there. If you compute the this thing, you will get that, uh, this formula. L uh, equal to M1 minus X2 square. Okay, so this is the 
by C and Q. So N on the cladding is the cope, uh, cladding, C is the residue of the light, L is the, uh, uh, the reflecting in this deviation, delta, and L is the length of the uh, fiber. Okay, so here you can see the if if it when it will be increased if the L is large L is large and then it will be increased and eta one eta two value if eta one is also large then also that it pulse modal delay will increase modal delay will increase then the pulse will be more distortion in the signal. You can see that uh, this one ray two is the short uh, shortest time it is reached and is reached earlier. Okay, and uh, it is it will take longer time to reach the fiber end. So um, how can you minimize the modal dispersion? Okay, or intermodal dispersion. So normally. Uh, in case of the dead end in this fiber, I told that the, if the multiple modes uh, uh, rays are there, so due to the multiple rays, multiple rays will reach and the other end of the fiber different different time, we will get the pulse dispersion. But if we instead of using the multi uh, mode, if we use the single mode, okay, so if we use the single mode, uh, there will be the less dispersion in fiber and the dreaded in the step. So if we did, uh, did, uh, try to remember the previous lectures, my, the, uh, I when I discuss the fiber dreaded in this, the dreaded in this fiber, the reflecting in this is not constant inside the uh, fiber, okay. Mm, then uh, inside the core, right. So the gradually it is increased, uh, decreased from the center to uh, interface of the core cladding, right. So due to that, uh, suppose this is the one ray, uh, it is propagating like this way. You can see the other ray is propagating like uh, this way, the circular, the helical shape, right? If you remember the main skew ray, you can see other end of the fiber, all the rays are reached, uh, are, will be reached uh, at the same time. Okay, will be reached at the same time. So if you design the gradient in this fiber, it can reduce the dispersion or um, using uh, monochromatic source laser. Okay, so which will give the single uh, narrow wavelength or the very few wavelength, the number of modes should be decreased. Okay, the laser, so when uh, the LED, LED will provide the broader rays, multiple <coughs> frequency are there, multiple rays are there, but the laser will provide the narrow beam. Okay, the simple, only few rays are emitting from the laser. Okay, you can use the laser, then uh, and if you use the multiple fiber, then also you can <coughs> reduce the dispersion, the diameter of the core. If the diameter of the core is less, then it will become a single mode fiber. Okay, or if it is not a single mode fiber, if it is a multi mode fiber, then also if you reduce the diameter, so few amount of the ray will propagate, so that can reduce the dispersion, modal dispersion. So like this way, and using low reflective index uh, for the clearing. So, so these are the some mechanism. Uh, if, if you implement like this way, so we can re reduce the dispersion, modal dispersion, or intermodal dispersion. So how can you re so that how how to get the one mode if the if you have already designed the multi mode fiber so how can you get the single mode from the multi mode fiber if we increase the if we use the higher wavelength uh, uh, optical signal for a multi mode fiber so for that uh, the if from the higher wavelength you will get the less amount of the if higher wavelength light is propagating through the fiber so it will give the less amount of the mode right so that's why normally in nowadays you know no one is used to uh, prefer the 850 nanometer uh, light, uh, so everyone would use to prefer the 1550 nanometer uh, light wavelength. So 1550 nanometer window that uh, wavelength light can prefer for for decreasing the uh, dispersion. Okay, the numerical aperture that is how can you decrease, change the numerical aperture if you change the diameter of the fiber. If if you already design the mark fiber, so it is not possible. Okay. So these are the other mechanisms due to that, uh, so that code, uh, code can be reduced uh, for decreasing the number of fiber. So if already if you design the multi-mode fiber, this is the OA to decrease the dispersion in multi-mode fiber. You can see here uh, how the single mode and the single step index multi-mode fiber and the um, step index graded index you can see so uh, here you can see so uh, in that other end all are reaching and almost at the same time okay so the less dispersion 
So all are reaching at the other end of the family at different times. Okay. So this reach here and this reach at that point. Okay. So you are getting the dispersion. So the less dispersion, high dispersion. So, uh, how to characterize the uh, dispersion? Okay, how to characterize the dispersion? So, in case of the uh, intermodal border, intermodal fiber, fiber uh, intermodal dispersion is have intra, intermodal dispersion, okay, intra. Intramodal. Intramodal is not related to modal or multimodal. Intermodal dispersion is used to happen inside the strap index, uh, sorry, single mode fiber. Okay, single mode fiber. So, for calculating the dispersion parameter, you need to, uh, you have to go through some formula, uh, okay, for case of the intermodal. So, intermodal is that it's further divided into two parts that are told that uh, we get dispersion and the material dispersion, okay. Mm, so, uh, here, uh, now, you can see here, the group delay, group delay per unit length. What is the group delay? Okay, group delay means that, that uh, delta time, we told the so one uh, wavelength is reached at a reach time, another wavelength is reached at that time. So distance between, uh, the, due to the different group velocity, you are the different different wavelength are reaching at the other end at different time. Okay, if you consider the one from one from the fiber, you can see different uh, wavelength, uh, different light are reaching at the different time. Okay, this is called the group delay per unit length. Group delay, group delay means uh, if the different wavelength. Uh, of the light is uh, reached at the other end of the fiber at different time. The difference between the uh, each and every uh, the difference between the shorter and the large, larger wavelength um, time. Okay, that is the group delay. So uh, this is the tau g. Okay, In tau g and group delay per unit length the tau g by l. L is the fiber length of the fiber. Okay, this also we can define as a uh, what is the group velocity? The velocity is equal to Distance by time. Okay, distance by time. So, what will it be? Tau G by L, tau G by L, that is the inverse of 1 by VG. Okay, inverse of 1 by VG. So, here the tau G uh, by L will be 1 by VG. Okay, the group velocity formula I have not discussed here, but the group velocity formula, there are the two formula of group velocity. Uh, VG is equal to del V omega by del beta or VG is equal to uh, C dk by the d beta what is the k k is here the wave number okay k is the wave number and k also you can write as a 2 pi by lambda so if you put the k value here so tau g that means the uh, tau g is a uh, 1 by bg if instead of bg if you write the d omega by d beta we get these two equation okay one is the uh, d beta by d uh, w and uh, the 1 by c d beta by dk Okay, k is the wave number, instead of k, you can write as a 2 pi by lambda. If you put here, instead of k, 2 pi by lambda, if you do the derivative with respect to lambda, you will get this equation. Okay, lambda square 2 pi, by, 2 pi c d beta by dk. Instead of k, if you are putting the 2 pi by lambda. So, derivative, derivative of 1 by lambda, that is equal to lambda square d lambda, right? Okay, 1 by lambda square derivative, that means 1 by lambda square d lambda will get. Okay, so from here you will get this one minus lambda square 2 pi by c d beta by d lambda. Okay, then uh, why now I have to calculate the d tau g by d lambda. What is the d tau g by d? d tau g is the group delay, right? So here it is group delay per uh, unit length. Here it is group delay per wavelength. Okay, group delay per wavelength along the path. Okay, that is the that defined as a d tau g by d lambda, right? So, if you want to uh, calculate the uh, group delay, okay, this is group delay per wavelength, okay. So, if you want to calculate the total group delay, suppose you can see as a mathematics only, okay, delta y, what will be the delta y? dy by dx into delta x, okay, this is the mathematics, right. So, this, like this we have written here, okay. Total delay difference, okay. D delta is the total delay difference, okay. Detail, detail is the delay difference per unit of the D delta by D lambda per unit of the. This is now the total delay difference, okay. So, if you multiply the 
the delay uh, the difference between two wavelength into the this one d, d tau g by d lambda you get the delay difference uh, to, total delay difference over the length okay this is the normal, normal mathematics on the d tau uh, delta tau is equal to d tau g by d lambda into uh, del lambda okay these are not required you know if you not remember also it is fine this are uh, the further derivation i am not going to this instead of tau g if you put this formula you will get this equation okay you will get this instead of tau g if you put this formula here you will get this equation okay so this some points you have to remember one is this one tau g by l is equal to how what is this the value tau g by l is equal to minus lambda square by 2 pi by 6 d delta by d lambda okay or these two formula or uh, total uh, delay difference okay total delay difference this is the good formula Now, uh, the, the, uh, there is one parameter, it is called the dispersion parameter. Okay, dispersion parameter, uh, this is equal to delay. What is the d tau g by d lambda? The delay the, the difference per unit wavelength. Okay, so what is the dispersion? Delay difference per unit wavelength per unit length. You are, you are dividing the delay difference per unit wavelength by L. Okay, that is called the dispersion. Dispersion can divide as a delay difference per unit length. Power unit wavelength or delay difference power unit wavelength power unit length. Okay, this is the delay difference. So, uh, so that I already told tau g by L is equal to 1 by bg. Okay, so here also instead of uh, tau g by L, you can directly write as 1 by bg. So, d d is 1 by bg. Okay, that first formula I told now nah? instead of bg, you can write this one also. So, this is, is not required to be important. Okay, so this is the dispersion formula. The Delay difference per unit length per unit wavelength. It's the dis dispersion formula. Now, the previous one I told that the delta tau is equal to d tau g by d lambda into delta lambda. Okay, so uh, this d tau, d tau is the what? The total delay difference. Okay, total delay difference over the length. The total delay difference that you can assume as a Gaussian pulse. You can see that these are the Gaussian pulse, right? If you see the broadening of the pulse, it's assumed as a Gaussian pulse. The, if you want to calculate, if you want to characterize uh, the Gaussian pulse, you can define as a lambda g. Okay, lambda g. Instead of delta t, you have uh, sigma g, sorry. Instead of delta t, here it is replaced as a sigma g, which will be RMS value of the Gaussian pulse. Okay, so RMS value of the uh, Gaussian pulse. Instead of delta t, I uh, will write in the sigma g. And then d, d tau g by d lambda into instead of delta lambda, I have written the sigma lambda. Okay. So, uh, this you can define the formula. Uh, d tau g by d lambda that you know, uh, that is a dl, okay, dl, okay. So, this is the uh, formula, okay, for calculating the dispersion. If you know the how much dispersion happened, you can calculate the, uh, the RMS value of the Gaussian pulse, okay, and if the delta lambda is there, okay. This is the relation between the RMS value of the Gaussian pulse and the dispersion parameter. Right. So, you need to know this formula, this formula in the previous slide, two formula, top one formula I have shown you, then the bottom one formula I have shown you. Okay, so these four formulas are required when you want to, when you want to calculate the dispersion parameter from the material, material dispersion as well as the waveguide dispersion. This I will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you and please like, subscribe and share my channel.